Hi everybody, this is Abby with Scrap and Abby, and I am going to be doing a quick video just to kind of as of um, sort of like an addition to my um, blog post that's going to be on ScorePal, and it's for a design team project, and it's working with SEI. We had a cross promotion with SEI, and I'll show you guys real quick the papers that we were given to work with. Absolutely gorgeous papers. Um, this is one of the packs. It's the um, do, 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 do. Diane, looks like it's a Diane collection and it has some foil papers in there and I used four of the different sheets out of this pack for my um, project I'm going to share with you guys. I used this one, that one, this one, and I think the pink one. Yeah, this one here, for that's four. And then out of this one I was sent, this is the Lexington Card Maker Paper Pack. And I used just one piece um, cardstock out of this pack, and it's this one right here. And I'll show you guys those in just a second. What I'm making for my design team project is actually, um, I'm making five of these, but I'm only going to have one of the projects listed on my tutorial that's going to be on the ScorePal blog. I'll put the date of that in the video notes. Um, I'm not sure what day my project is up on the blog, but I don't want to, to do a quick video as I was working on my project. Is I'm making, um, instead of like a coffee mug or something like that, I'm making some teacups and they're kind of not like your traditional tiny you know little teacups like whoops there I go sorry about this big I'm making some like this size of a cup and what I'm going to do is um, I'm making one for each of my sister-in-laws I have four and then one for my mother-in-law and this is going to be for Mother's Day we're all getting together and um, kind of having a, a Mother's Day brunch with all the family so I'm going to give each of them one of these as their gift it's not done yet so don't you know it's pretty plain because I just got it put together but uh, what I'm going to do is I made a saucer and um in a cup and what I'm going to do I'll show you real quick this is chipboard it's not done yet of course I embossed the bottom just so it had some stuff on it and I'm going to put some some stuff on the bottom too and then I have um you know like a coordinating oh, let me actually find the coordinating one coordinating card stock and I'm going to put these together and then I'm going to make it you know looks like it's a saucer and then the cup is going to be sitting on the saucer so it's going to look like that so this is just like like I said it's not even close to being done yet but that's just gives you an idea and then what I'm going to do is fill this with like some tea bags um, some different kinds of creamers and probably some little treats chocolates or something like that and then what they can do when they're done is if they want I'm going to get some of those plastic inserts they can plant a flower in here if they want or you know just have some fake flowers or something like that um, you know, as long as it was in a container, you know, the plastic container, they could put a potted plant here if they wanted, even though this is paper, because, you know, it would have an insert or, you know, whatever they wanted to do with it. They could put pencils on their desk with it or whatever. It just has some display in their home. And then what I did for my handle is I used my, um, it's a Sizzix doily die. I'll put the name of the die in my, um, product list but what it does is it makes this die of course and I'll show you how I made the handle in this video too and I just fold it in half and cut it out and then I'll show you guys so just to kind of give you a quick idea what the actual uh, teacup looks like I will go ahead and show you guys how I make that so these are the remaining four pieces of cardstock that I have I've already cut these into nine by five and a half and what I'm going to do is score these and I'll show you, I'll just do one just for the video and then I'll do the handle to show you guys how I did it. So what you'll do is you'll lay your cardstock in on this direction on your score pal and then you're gonna score at um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight inch mark. So I'll go ahead and make those score marks. And I love using my score pal for um, all kinds of projects. It's not, not just for your traditional cards or, you know, um, that kind of thing. It's really um, a neat tool to use for embossing on your products or in projects and um, just gives you really crisp, clear score marks as you can see. So what we're going to do now is we're going to flip it this direction and I'm going to do a score mark down um, one and one quarter inch. So the one and then the one quarter mark here just straight down like that. And then what I'm left with, as you can see, and I'll probably see these are on the back side, are all the one inch score marks. And then when I flipped it, this is the one and one quarter score inch mark. So what you're going to do next is you're going to go ahead and take just your scissors. And all I'm doing, I'll flip it over so you can see. Oops, sorry, this is a new camera angle for me. I'm trying to get used to it. Um, you just want to cut up from the bottom of the first, this score mark, all the way up to your initial score mark right here that we did, or the second score mark. So you just want to cut. And I'm going to actually flip it over because it's easier for me to see it on this side um, than on that side. And what this is essentially doing is creating a tab that you're going to fold up at the bottom to make your 
base of your teacup. So there is a, a tutorial for this on the Scorpow blog. It's a little bit different dimension. I made mine different because I wanted my teacup to be a little bit taller than what that one was. Um, I made a mock-up of the original one. I don't have it handy, but it's it's a little bit shorter. So that's kind of what I do is I, I'll take, um, you know, if I find an idea that's already been done or something like on the Scorpow blog when we're doing design team projects, I'll, you know, mix them up a little bit or add them a little bit, you know, make different embellishments or something like that. So I'm not completely, you know, just copycatting somebody else's project. And then there's other ones I've made completely just on my own. So it's just kind of fun to do that a little bit, kind of make it your own project. And you can see here where I've made all those little slits there. And then what we're going to do is on your score mark, um, you're going to go ahead and fold up on these. And we're not quite done yet with all the trimming. I'm just going to do this part now because it's just easier for me once I get to the end piece to show you. Um, the last piece we're going to do to make a little flap. And this is what's going to... Um, show or um, what this is what's going to be your little lip for your cup when you fold it so i'll go ahead and pull these up like this and then i'm going to go ahead and cut this last piece off here completely now if you were using directional paper like on this one this was a you know the full 12 by 12 you know i made sure i didn't have it going this way so you know the pattern was on its side i laid it out this way when i did my initial cuts that way the pattern when the cup is you know in its form it's going to show these flowers in the in the upright position so if you have a pattern paper or if you're using something with text or something you're going to make sure you um, make note of that before you do your initial cut of the nine by five and a half on this side. And then so I'm gonna go ahead and just snip this last piece off here like that. And then we're gonna go ahead and just make a, actually I'm gonna grab my bigger scissors here. And just gonna make just a, you know, just you're just making a tab. It doesn't really matter. I'll get a little closer so you can see. It doesn't matter really what the dimensions are. And then for me, I just flip it over because I just kind of eyeball, you know, when I'm con constructing things, of course I measure, but I'm a pretty big fan of eyeball and stuff too. So when you're, you know, unless it's critical that you need to have that measurement. So this is what you're gonna end up with, this like this. And then now we're just gonna go ahead and fold along on our score marks. And I'm folding this direction because this is the outside and of the cup and this is what I want to show. So, and if you don't like these um, score marks, if you want more of the softer, you know, or the more defined, you know, you can flip it over when you're doing your initial score marks. It just depends on what kind of a look you're going for, so. And I'm also going to be doing this on a couple of the foil papers. And I've already done one, and I know it works just perfect because this, the score tool um, that you get with your score palette just does a really good job of making some really nice, crisp, clean folds. So I'm sorry I keep flipping this paper up and down, holding it. I'm just trying to, it's a little stiff, which is good. That's going to give me some good form with the cup. But I'm just trying to maneuver here. All right, and our last score. Now, so what you have here is the basic um, construction of your cup. And what I'm gonna do is just add some score tape. And I have it in every single length because even before I was on the score pal team, um, I used um, the, my score pal. I have one already, and then obviously score tape, which you can buy from score pal. I love it. I use it all the time. I absolutely recommend this stuff. It really holds a lot of my constructed projects together without having to use a liquid adhesive. So, anyway, so what you're going to do is what we're going to essentially do is put some score tape, and I'm going to put mine on this flap here, and then we're just going to go over like this, and we're going to make the cup. So. Um, yes, you can tear your your, your uh, score tape. I'm kind of an OCD type of anal retentive kind of a person. I like to have my edge like just neat. That's just me. But you certainly can um, tear this if you don't want to do cuts like this. And you can use a wider width of the score tape if you want. Um, this I found this just works for me to use this quarter inch just like that. The one inch is probably just a little bit too too wide. So, and then you can burnish this down with your score tool as well. And then we're just gonna simply peel this off. And if you overlap on your edge, it's okay because you can just simply take the little bit of tape that's over, flop it over. Problem solved. So now we're gonna go ahead and fold these together. I'm gonna try to do this on the camera here too as I'm doing it myself. 
and just make this mark. And also, if you wanted to ink this, like say you had like you know lighter colored cardstock or craft kind of cardstock or something like that, you could certainly distress ink it, which is actually what I do on almost everything. But I'm not on this because I'm going to be using some glimmer mist and some sprays. I'm going to be putting some handmade flowers and things like that. And I didn't really want to take away and make this too harsh. So I want this to be more of a softer project for the cups because it's Mother's Day and just trying to make it a little bit more soft. But you could certainly do that. And I might, if I make a, like if I make a mug for my husband for Father's Day or something, I might, you know, do it or it's a little bit more masculine colors. Now for this part, what you're going to do is I'm going to take my um, thinner score tape here, the 8 and 8 inch score tape here, and then we're just going to go ahead and put this on the very end. Maybe I should zoom that in just a little bit so you guys can see what I'm doing. Bear with me again. This is my new camera angle my husband just set up for me today, so I'm super excited by it. And then I'm just taking this on the very edge here, oops, and just putting it like that. I need to snip this off, and you're going to do this on four of the flaps, because essentially what's going to happen is you're going to take this flap down with the one with the score tape on it, and then you're going to go like this, and you're going to adhere it down, and you're going to do this for each one, it's, you know, each one that goes across. So this will be here you know, here and then here. It doesn't matter what order you go in because it's going to be covered, you know, in the end. So I won't show you all of that during the video because that's kind of the general idea. So I'll peel it off. And pardon my hands, I've got paint and all kinds of stuff all over my thumbs and stuff today. And then um, you're just going to take it. Oops. Put it down because I lost where I was here. And then I'm doing this, you can do this on your score pal. I typically don't craft on top of this, but um, I just have it out because I was showing you guys the score marks. Um, you know, you just kind of want to have it on a flat surface that we're going to get a really good, nice seal. And then you're going to just do this with it, just kind of squeeze it, and then you would move on to your next one. And it's and so on and so forth until you got it completely done. And what I did for this one, because I wanted to make sure the very bottom was, you know, because if you press on it like this, it's going to cave in. So I just took my Mr. Bottle, or you could use whatever you wanted, and I just set it down, and I just did this business with it. Just kind of press it down flat so the score tape was really adhered to the bottom. So anyway, so that's how you do the basic construction of the cup. And that's this one here. And then I'll show you guys the handle real quick. And I will do it this one. So this is um, the handle I'm going to use. And it's a coordinating cardstock for this cup itself. And then all I did is you can do like a circle punch. You can cut on your Cricut. You know, those kinds of things. I have a couple of cr Cricuts. I don't really use them as often as I probably should. They're just not as easy or convenient for me to get out as my Vagabond, which I absolutely love. I use it all the time. I love all the Sizzix dies. And um, that's what this is. It's the Sizzix Doily die. And all I did was fold this in half and just match it up so it's perfect on, you know, per pretty close to being perfect on each side. Actually, this is not the one I wanted to use. I wanted to use this one. Pardon me. Because what I did, and this is actually a good idea to show you guys, this is going to be the one that's going to be on the base of the cup of the chipboard I showed you guys for the cup, the saucer. And then this is actually the one that's going to be the handle. And I put some mist on the back of it just because for this reason, when it's folded over, you're not going to see the white peeking through. And you can ink it, of course, yes, but, you know, like I said, I was trying to make these a little bit softer, softer colored. I'm oh, sorry here. So you just fold this in half. And again, I apologize, you guys, because I am learning this new camera angle and trying to do this at the same time. So thank you for your patience with me on this. And I'm going to set this down just for a second so I can um, get it down where I need to go. And I'll just use my... Uh, scoring tool to kind of fold this down and um, what was I saying to you guys before I was talking about this oh you there's all kinds of circle punches you could use you could use different you know um, of the different Cricut cartridges things like that and I'm just doing this because it's just easier for me and what I did on this one you can see it's, it's pretty close I mean it's not like you know probably a totally perfect cut but you know um, I just freehand cut it once I had it folded in half and see, so having that mist on the back really helps kind of cover that so you don't really notice it as much. And I'm just going to hold this towards easier for me to see so I make sure I do this even because this is the only, <laughs> this is this is for the actual project so I need to make sure I do it right. Is I just took my scissors and I just kind of went around in a circle like this and just, you know, you always want to move the paper, not your scissors when you're doing any kind of fussy cutting or cutting like that. And then you just have this little piece that you can use, you know, somewhere else in the project if you want or, you know, save it for another, another, um, project to have in the future and that's basically my handle so obviously I need to find a way to get this to stick to the side of the cup so what I'm doing now is I'm going to go ahead and just do a snip like this and a snip like this 
and then I need to make a little flap so I can adhere it to the side of the cup so it looks like this one where it's on either side. And then what you're going to do, and I'll move my score tool over here just a little bit and I'm going to come down just a little bit closer so you can see this part. Hopefully I won't, I think my battery is about to die in my remote. It's not moving as quickly as it used to. Okay, there. So I'm going to line this up here and I'm going to make a score mark on my, my little cheat sheet here. I made my notes. I'm scoring this at the quarter mark here. I did a test on this uh, trial one because I was made my own measurements up because I made it bigger and I didn't want to use just a standard circle punch. I wanted to make it look, you know, have some, you know, a little bit more design to it and kind of some little bit of, you know, more femininity having the, you know, the little scalloped edges and stuff. So I'm just going to hold it. This, and you know, this might be a little tricky for you because it's not like, you know, you have to kind of do it this way. So you hold it down and then make a score mark like that. And then you just kind of make sure this is flush at the bottom. And then you just continue on. If you lose your way of where your mark is, go ahead and just take your score tool and then hold it here and then grab your piece and then just continue to go straight down. And then you're going to get that same score mark at the quarter inch mark. And you have it there and you have it there. It's easier to probably see on this side. And then we're going to do the same thing with this piece here. And then what I did is I actually used a combination um, of, of adhesives for this one. I used my score tape on the flat part, but then to actually put them together, what I did is I used a little bit of some liquid adhesive, um, white glue. And that was just because I wanted to have, make sure that when I put the score tape in, I wasn't trying to have to you know go through. You certainly could use this with, actually, let me show you. Let me grab it here and rolled on me. You know, you could fit this through because it would, you know, go through there and fit. Oops, sorry, my window's behind me, so my sun's coming in. But I didn't want to, you know, do that. So I just put some, a um, little bit of white glue, and this is what I use. I have a couple different kind of, kinds of liquid adhesive I use, but this is the one I used. And I just went around, you know, the scallopy part with the white glue. And then after, um, for the flaps, you go ahead and, I guess I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here on this, sorry. Fold this down. And this makes your little flaps here, and that's what I was talking about. And this is what I use for my score tape um, on this. And it's, you know, really sturdy. I've been, you know, messing around with that cup, kind of flipping it around. The first one I did, you know, just kind of doing some stuff with it like this just to make sure it was going to stick okay. Because I had a bigger piece of cardstock, oops, for this one. And I wanted to figure, well, I'll try it out on this. And if it doesn't, you know, falls off, then we'll try a different method. But it worked just fine. So all I did um, is you make your score marks like that. And then you go ahead and put your handles together like this and they're going to measure up because the holes you can see. And so I'll do the liquid adhesive on this part here and then you know this is where I'm going to put the score tape. And all I did for the score tape is I put just two pieces oops, right there and this cup stuck just fine no problem. So I'll do this as quick as I possibly can. I'm going to put my paper underneath here just to protect my board. So um, this is kind of one of my first tutorials I've done in quite some time. Um, I did one, oh my goodness, probably close to a year ago. I just didn't really have a really good camera set up at all. Um, we've moved since then and I have a, a bigger craft room and I have a better setup at this house. So it's been, um, you know, kind of on my, my list of things to get done is to do some actual tutorials and that kind of thing because I have quite a few videos um, of just, you know, doing some project shares on my YouTube channel. But as far as some tutorials, I wanted to kind of get back into doing that again because I really enjoy doing that. So even though I'm covering up most of this that I used the Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist on, it doesn't matter because it, the intention of it, like I said, was just to cover the white pieces so it wasn't showing. And I'm going to um, go off camera for just a second because I need to hold this close to my face so I can see what I'm doing here. Um, make sure I got this lined up here. Okay, there we go. So now I have them put together with that adhesive and then to get it to stick to the side of the cup, I'm going to go ahead and put some score tape on. Now you can use, you know, one, you know, one length and just put one strip and then kind of fold up the excess that's hanging over because that's, uh, you know, it's easy to do with a score tape. Or you can use a couple different widths, um, you know, and put them on there. I'm trying to find one. Oh, there it is. Kind of got a little bit of a mess going on the right side of my table here, guys. Sorry. And I'm just going to go ahead and put the score tape on here like this. And it might drive some people nuts that I take the time to cut it. But, you know, that's just me. I Like I said, I'm kind of quirky like that. And I kind of have OCD a little bit. So <laughs> I like to have my my tape in a, um, 
you know, neat line. It's just me. And I actually have tape just for my, um, or scissors just for my tape. It's these blue, old blue handled ones I got from Creative Memories like a long, long time ago. So, I'm going to get, they get too gummy, I just wipe them off with alcohol. Not a big deal. When I was at CK convention um, last month, I was in the button form class, and one of the ladies she was talking about um, different adhesives and things you could use for your chipboard books and things like that. And she was talking about score tape, and somebody in in the class didn't know what score tape was, and so I was just like, "Oh, I know, I know," because I have a bunch of it because I brought it with me. I'm going to zoom out just for a little bit here, you guys. And so she was talking about score tape and the different um, adhesives and things like that. And so when I told her I had some, she pulled, you know, she grabbed one of my rolls that I had with me and she showed him and she was talking about, you know, oh, how you guys can, you know, just tear it because it's on this thin paper. And she's like, oh, she goes, but not this lady. She must cut hers because it's like really neat and even. And she had torn mine off to show you could tear it. And so it was kind of funny because they were kind of chided me a little bit. So there you can see the score tape. And I'll peel this one off here too. Oops. Like I said, the more I do these, the better I'm going to get with this new angle. So my other setup, it was too, it was kind of like behind me, and it was too, too difficult to try to do any tutorials that way. So, and I need to close my blinds. So I apologize for that. So I'm not going to stick this on yet, just because I haven't actually got the bottom of the cups together. But this is what it, it's as easy as. Actually, I can go ahead because it's not going to make a difference. So. And you don't you can put this wherever you want as far as the handle goes, but I'm just gonna I'm choosing to put mine on the crease. You can see inside here where the flap oops where the flap was. I'm putting mine on this side just because I you know no reason I just really am. So I'm gonna go ahead and just stick this on. It's as simple as that, like this. You can see here, and then you just stick your fingers inside the cup and kind of put your finger and then kind of press down like that, and that's gonna help the score tape. Actually, it's probably easier because it is open on the bottom. I can get it down. Now, if you wanted to put a little bit of, um, you know, liquid adhesive or something like that on the end pieces, I'll probably will on mine because that one's kind of popping up just a little bit. But um, I'll probably just put, a, you can use this, you know, the smaller score tape and slip a little piece in there and that'll hold that down just fine. So I'll actually do that. Anyway, so that's kind of the basic construction of the cup. I'm going to zoom out real quick and then I'm going to wrap this portion of the video up. And what I'm going to do is um, when I get my cups all done, my batteries are dying, I'm telling you guys. I'm going to do a video of all five of the cups together and let you see what they look like with all the, the flowers and embellishments. And um, I may not have the tea and stuff inside yet. I have to go to the store and get some different teas and you know those certain ones that my sister-in-law's like. So, But I'll have everything else together. But this is just to kind of give you guys an idea of how you can take you know your cardstock like this, do some scoring with your score pal and your score tool, which is amazing to make, you know, a dimensional project like this. And then, you know, using your score tool on even a die cut um, item to make it, you know, adhere to your project. And um, it's just a really fun thing to, to do. So anyway, so this is the uh, wrap up portion of this video. And I will going to attempt to, um, oops, sorry, my remote's in the view. <laughs> I'm going to attempt to try to combine the two videos together. I haven't really mastered that yet. My husband is a um, computer network software engineer, so he's like really smart and he knows how to do that kind of stuff. But I try to be self-sufficient on my own, so um, I might need to get his help. Otherwise, this video will be just on its own and then I'll have a project share one of all five cups when I'm done. So thanks for bearing with me on my first tutorial in quite some time with my new camera angle. Um, I was probably kind of a little wonky here and there, but you know, that's how you do. See you guys in a little bit.